Some 4.5 billion years ago, our Earth was formed by a series of collisions and coming together of swirling gases and dust. And since then, it has undergone different stages of evolution to become what it is today. From being a supercontinent filled with water to housing dinosaurs and the first Homo sapiens, the transition has no doubt been interesting. But what if we retraced our roots and travelled one billion years into the past? What would we find? Did we exist back then? Were dinosaurs around? Was our planet habitable? Well, science has revealed all the answers to these questions and many more, and in today's video, we'll be sharing it all with you. So sit back, relax, and get your seatbelt strapped as we take you down memory lane within the next few minutes. The origin of Earth still remains a huge conundrum and a constant subject of debate among philosophers even to this day. But that hasn't deterred scientists from attempting to study its evolution and transformation over time. However, it's not exactly straightforward. One of the greatest physicists to ever exist, Albert Einstein, is of the opinion that to go down memory lane, we need to travel faster than the speed of light. This is something that has never been done before and perhaps jeopardizes our quest to explore the past, but not when you have a natural time machine. I mean, several hypotheses have suggested that we can venture deep into our past by traveling through space-time tunnels called wormholes. Sounds like the perfect option, but apparently it's not. Wormholes are millions of billions of light years away from where you're seated. Locating them is a Herculean task even with the groundbreaking technologies that are available to us nowadays. So how do we do this the easy way? Let's say you woke up one morning and somehow found yourself living in the past, exactly one billion years ago. Well, welcome to the land of loneliness and boredom, because at this point, you'd be the only creature on Earth. You'd be all alone by yourself without companionship or opposition, because at this point, there was no creature on Earth. But how do we know this? After all, there's no calendar that dates back to one billion years ago. And back then, most of the tools for recording data were not in existence. But even if they did, we wouldn't need them, because ancient rocks and continental crusts were responsible for collecting data about our Earth at the time. They hold all the necessary historical records for our planet, which has served as reference for many historians. Over the centuries, scientists have relied upon and dug deep into these natural archives to reveal most of the hidden secrets about Earth mainly because they tell the accurate story of the transition of our world through the different phases of evolution. And to a large extent, it is believed that they could also give us a hint of what to expect in the future. According to the information obtained from these iconic elements, the outer crust of the Earth was only developed several hundred million years ago after it was formed. Those were the original surface rocks and were present at the dawn of time. But unfortunately, they're no longer available for study, and scientists were only able to get an idea of what happened and how it went down by studying meteorites and the moon, because those two alongside the sun were formed simultaneously with Earth. Human presence was scarce at first, but according to archaeological and genealogical research, the first humans surfaced sometime between 7 and 2 billion years ago. This was long before Homo sapiens even came into existence. The earliest known humans were called Homo habilius, also known as handymen. They occupied areas around the eastern and southern regions of Africa about 2.4 to 1.4 billion years ago. A few hundred million years later, Homo rudolfensis was discovered in East Africa. Historians believe that the Homo species had special skills that enabled them to process food with stone. Then came the Homo erectus species, also called the Upright Man, who appeared between 1.8 billion to 110,000 years ago. All of these Homo species originated from Africa before spreading out to places like Europe, Asia and other continents. But except you lived as old as Methuselah, there's no chance you'd have met any of these ancestors. At the time, all of the Earth's land masses initially ripped apart before smashing back together to form a huge supercontinent called Rodinia. 
After some deep research many years later, historians reconstructed the map of this supercontinent and found it encompassed many regions and countries that exist today. They include India, Australia, Congo, Siberia, Amazonia, North Chile, South Chile, São Francisco and West Africa among others. So perhaps you would have been lounging in a secluded area in Sydney Harbour or Amazonia. At the time, the Ford of Nice, one of the oldest rock formations in the world, was just coming alive. This was during a period of continental shift when the North American continent was still a narrow basin beneath an ancient shallow sea. The area now forms part of what we know as New York City today. There's also a possibility that other continents would have been submerged underwater as well before eventually making their way up to the Earth's surface. As at one billion years ago, the Earth was devoid of plants and animals. Instead, we had single-celled organisms that went through a series of evolution too, just like everything else that existed at the time. Five of the eukaryotic species were robust enough to survive into the 21st century. Those are the animals that you see around you. The protozoa, the plants and algae, the slime moulds and fungi. The bulk of our planet today is made up of oxygen, iron, silicon and magnesium. But none of these existed one billion years ago. Since Earth was formed not too far from the Sun, we know that it is a rocky, solid planet without an atmosphere initially. The state of the Earth's atmosphere in the early years isn't exactly crystal clear. But we know that in the very beginning, at about the time the Earth was created, or perhaps a few hundred million years down the line, organisms like algae produced oxygen in the oceans. However, because of its high reactivity rate and because there were several reduced minerals in the ancient oceans, most of the oxygen produced couldn't make it to the atmosphere where it would have reacted with other gases. So even if the evolutionary process had produced life forms, they would have no oxygen to breathe. And even if they did, it is quite possible that the ultraviolet light from the sun would have snuffed life out of them. According to Walker and Preston Cloud, two researchers at the University of California, atmospheric oxygen only began to accumulate some two billion years ago. That's after most of the reduced minerals in the sea were oxidized. However, the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere was still insufficient and you'd only be able to live for a few minutes. Fast forward to one billion years ago, the oxygen levels began to increase until it reached a significant level potentially suitable enough to support life. And that represented a huge boost for organisms trying to survive beneath or above the Earth's surface. This ultimately altered the ultraviolet radiation. The ultraviolet radiation was responsible for breaking down molecules of different elements, like from DNA and oxygen to the chlorofluorocarbons that are embroiled in the stratospheric ozone depletion. Eventually, the ozone layer was formed and that helped to absorb some of the ultraviolet radiation. This aided in the formation of organisms like prokaryotes, eukaryotes and metazoa. At this stage, the atmosphere was gradually reaching a stable level of oxygen but still, the atmosphere was barely in cohesion. We had some periods of relative warmth and other periods of extreme cold during the transition to modern geologic times. And speaking about time, the Earth rotated much faster one billion years ago than it does today. As a result, an average day back then is estimated to be around 18 hours, which is much shorter than what we experience nowadays. Perhaps you're wondering what a billion years into the future will look like. Well, give this video a thumbs up and we might just be painting the picture for you in our next video.